Alright guys, Jeremy here again with the Crazy Christmas Crew uh, for the next video of the Lightarama uh, software. This video I want to touch on the keyboard shortcuts and the pasting options, copy and pasting options. Um, first of all, this video is basically, you've got the basics down, you're getting a little bit more advanced with the programming and you want to figure out ways to make your programming a little bit quicker, how to, how to do it a little bit quicker. Um, I always used a mouse before, actually before this year. This is the um, sixth year, seventh year I've done Lightarama, and I've always used a mouse, I've always liked that. However, this year, because I'm doing a lot of my programming away from home on my laptop, my mouse broke, and I hate using the uh, touchpad mouse, I've kind of gotten used to and uh, the keyboard shortcuts. And I want to go over the shortcuts, and you can't really see in the video anyway what I'm pressing, but I'm going to be telling you uh, what I'm doing. Obviously, you get the program up. You can move the mouse around to select it, um, and you can turn it on and off and everything like that. However, by using the up, down, left, and right arrow buttons, you can see that the square cursor on the screen moves around. Okay, let me, let me zoom in a little bit. I know the quality of these videos aren't the greatest, and I apologize for that. I don't have a professional screen recording. Anyway, up, down, left, right will move your cursor around. Uh, if you press and hold the shift button and then go up, down, left, right, you'll see that you can make your selection area greater or bigger. Okay. If you let go of the shift button and move around, it's going to go back down to one square. Now, in this case, let's just say I want to, right here are my arches. Let me scroll down a little bit. Right here are my arches, channel 1 through 8, I want to go up and down. Um, with the mouse, obviously, you'd have to make sure you select the on button, and then click each individual box that you want on. Hopefully, you don't make a mistake. And especially with a, a mouse on a laptop, it's really a pain in the butt. So I try to keep the selection up here on just selection. It doesn't matter what it's on. I just like to keep it on selection. So if I do have to use the mouse to select something I'm not actually turning something on or off or fading in or out or whatever the case may be. Also another thing you want to try to or I like to try to keep my mouse up here on the toolbar and not here on one of the squares because if you let it go you'll get this little uh, information box that pops up and it tells you what uh, channel is that your mouse is on and everything and when you're trying to program sometimes it gets in the way. So just push your mouse up here. I like to keep it right on the play button this way I can play this uh, hit the play button and play it. All right, but anyway, if I want to turn on a box, I hit the end button, and that is the short key, shortcut key for on. So, uh, if I wanted to chase it up and down, I can just hit on, down right, on down right, on right. I can actually do this pretty quickly, much quicker than I can do with the mouse. And then if I wanted to go back up, same thing. And you kind of get you kind of get a little quick and, and smooth with turning on and off, especially if you're chasing up and down or doing things like that. Um, if I wanted to turn, if I made a mistake, I want to turn it off. You come up to it and you hit the delete button, top right corner. I think this is an unusual position for this button, but for the off button, but that will turn off the selected channel. Okay. If you wanted to fade up or fade down. Most of the time you're fading more than just one block, so you're going to shift, select what you want to fade, and then hit D for down, or U for up, and that will fade up or fade down, again, to your preset, whatever, in this case it's 0 to 100%. Okay, you do have the T button for your twinkle, your S button for shimmer, and then... What is the button for toggle? I think uh, the G button. You see, it has all the shortcuts. You see here, I don't know if you can read that, but it says toggle G key. So under the toggle, I can hit the G key. Now turn anything on or off, basically, by doing the same button. Um, by hitting the G button, it'll turn it on and off. One really cool thing about a specific key here that I've just recently found out about. You can see this section right here is blank. Okay. And if I want to fill in this section, actually let me do something a little bit different first. I'm going to delete this fade up. Let's just say I'm programming this arch and I want to go up and down and up and down and up and down. 
okay, so, so on and so forth. If I want this whole section right here, this whole section to be turned on, there's a couple ways to do it. You can do it the hard way and go to each button and turn it on that case. Or you can select, you know, you can hold the shift button and select what you want and hit on, but you're still going to have to do a lot of different, uh, you know, a lot of selecting and uh, it takes some time. I've recently found this one shortcut key. It's called the O, what's the o button. Not zero, but O. And if you click on the O button, it will fill in the gap between two selected already points that are on. So basically between this and this, if I click the O key in the middle, it would turn it completely on. Now, the funny thing about this button is let me actually undo all this. If this was, let's say, fade up, oops, fade up instead of off. I mean, so instead of on, excuse me, if it was like this, and I hit the O button, it's going to go from 100% fade to zero because it's fading up here. Why it's set like that? Is there a way to change that? I don't know, but I know that's the pre that's what it's uh, automatically set for. And the same thing vice versa. If this was, let's say, uh, down, and this was on, and you hit O in between, it would fade up. Okay? And let's select this. I haven't tried this, so let's try it together. If it's down to down, or, you know, it's, it's fade down to fade up, I hit the O, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so there you go. It basically goes from the point, the level that it's at when it starts, to the level that it's at when it's finished. If this was at 50%, let's try that. We select this, we hit our intensity tool, which is the I key, it sets it at I. Now if I go in the middle, and I hit O, it takes it from 0 to 50% automatically. So it basically takes it from whatever it starts at to whatever it ends at, and fades it to that level. So it's a nice little shortcut key to have and to, you know, to use, and it makes my life a lot easier, especially using the keyboard. I don't think I'll ever go back to using a mouse 100%. I obviously stopped to use the mouse, but I don't have to use it for everything. It's a lot quicker, in all honesty, to, uh, to use it this way. So, now, the paste option. I kind of hit on it on an earlier video. I don't think I went into too much detail. So I want to select, I want to show you that. When you start doing a lot of your programming, you'll create a, a little design in your lights that you really like. Uh, you might want to save that into another um, animated sequence. Just I, I sometimes will create an animated sequence, no music involved, and I will have my boxes. If I like something that I do, especially if it's like a long time to do, I will copy and paste it into an animated sequence and keep that as, you know, label it as see as uh, designs or whatever you want to label it as. This way you can actually open up sequ that sequence when you're programming another song and copy and paste from that sequence right onto your song. And in most cases, if you're working a song that's in four quarter time, um, then it will fall right into place because you'll find that you use the same kind of pattern and grid for every song because it's what you get used to. Anyway, with that said, if I wanted to select this, and I want this to repeat for a number of measures. Let's just say 16 measures. Instead of having to draw this out 16 times, um, that's actually what I'm, what I'm talking about is just this section right here. This starts at 1. This is the first beat. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh. Because this is an 8. See now, you, you can see here, I'll turn my mouse, it goes from beat 1, beat 2, beat 3, beat 4, back to beat 1. Now I want this pattern to repeat 16 times. So I can select this, whether I use the keyboard or use the mouse, right click on it, hit copy. Now if I select here, which some people do when I've done in the past, and you hit paste multiple, keep in mind you've already 
drawn it once, so you'd be you'd want to repeat it or paste it 15 more times. If you select here, or if you have it selected, if you have it selected like this, and you copy it, you can just right click and hit paste multiple again. Um, paste multiple. If you hit paste, it'll paste it once. If you hit paste multiple, it gives you this this dot, this box that opens up, and it tells you how many times do you want to paste it, and in what order do you want to paste it. You can say, I want to paste this 16 times. Now this is how many times would you like to paste this section horizontally? Basically, from end to end to end to end, all the way as far as the end of the song. I say I want to repaste, uh, paste this 16 times. Boom, hit OK. And as we move on to the future, you see this is actually pasted 16 times, and it ends. All right. If you have a musical background, you understand that phrases in music usually about 16 beats, 16 bars, 16 measures, um, and uh, not 16 bars, but 16 full measures is the end of the phrase. And then you might want your lights to do something a little differently after 16 measures, so you're not looking at the same the lights doing the exact same thing the entire song. However, in some cases, you want that to repeat through the entire song. You don't want to change it. You want it to be that way through the entire song. So when you click right click and hit paste multiple, it gives you the option to say all the way to the end of the sequence. If I click that and hit OK, it will paste that repeated pattern all the way to the end of the song. Okay. You have a couple more options here, which pretty much makes sense if you read them. But if we hit paste multiple, it says how many times would you like this to paste section this how many times would you like to paste this section? vertically on top of each other okay if I wanted to paste two times four times whatever you want to okay, want to do let's just say two times and hit okay you'll see that it actually just pastes the other eight eight bars or I'm sorry eight uh, channels right below it the same exact design this helps if you have two separate arches or if you have mirroring things on both sides of the yard that you want to do the same thing at the same time so makes it easy. Also, has the same option for all the way to the end, meaning all the way to the bottom of the track. Now, I use this feature, as you see, it just repeats all the way to the bottom. When I have a big hit or the whole song fades out and I want everything to just come on hit and then fade out at the same time, I will select what I'm doing and then copy and paste it all the way to the bottom. All right. And keep in mind when you do your paste selections, you can also do both of them at the same time. I want it to repeat for 16 bars. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I want it to repeat 16 times and twice. So, and do it both at the same time, and it'll do all that at the same time. So keep that in mind. Hope this video helped. Um, the next video I am coming out with, I'm not sure, honestly, what it'll be. But anyway, more videos to come. That's where I'm getting at. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope it helped. Make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.